Well, welcome in the name of Jesus to Pure Art Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share a message of how God so loves you that maybe you are experiencing a feeling and sense of rejection and you feel that the Lord has rejected you, forsaken you. Why? Because everyone around you has. In this message, I am going to share with you how God is the only one who wants to meet with you. He cares so much and He desires that this day your eyes will be so open to see and to receive His love for you. Now, maybe you've had abuse. Maybe you've had abandonment or any list of things. I so pray that you would discover that He is a father to the fatherless, a husband to the widow, and that He never leaves you nor forsakes you. And today is the day of salvation. Today, if you are opening and willing, He will so meet with you and He will wipe away every tear and He will demonstrate how He loves you. And so, Father, we come in a holy fear. We come in the name of Jesus. We come simply to receive. Holy Spirit, would you just do a real mighty work today in this message? Let the word go forth and let it really penetrate. Let it bring forth a deliverance. And I just speak life of each person, Father. Father, let us see again, hear again. Let us know that we are good again accepted in your sight by the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you for each person here. And I just pray a breaking through because you are the Lord <clears throat> of our breakthrough. We come to you, Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the power, and the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. I want to so start with one of my favorite verses. And I don't really know where we're going today, but... We're just going to see what the Spirit has to say. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. We have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. Most believers never get there because why the enemy so comes in and he works through your life to present all these things, to create in you a sense that you are rejected, that you are forsaken, that maybe this is for others, but not for you. And I look at a lot of my life, I experienced this. And I'm so grateful when the Lord opened my eyes in the secret place of his presence. And he said, I want you to come to know I love you. I want you to see the blood that I shed for you. I didn't bargain for you. I didn't try to get the lowest cost. I saw you as so precious. There was no price I would not have paid for you. And today as you come into the secret place, this image of the Holy of Holies, where as you enter in, all you see is the blood that was sprinkled, the blood that declares the life of Jesus poured out for your redemption to declare to you today, you are accepted, precious, desired. He desires, he wants you, he looks at you because he doesn't see you through your eyes. He doesn't see you through the perception of others. He sees you through his blood. He sees you as something so worthy. And it says this, we have come to know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, not that he has it. And this is not a human love. This is his love, and it's a love that he is. I look at, I grew up in Ireland, and there are statements and phrases we use. They're English phrases. But when I say it here in the States, they have no meaning, no understanding, because they are Irish and there are heavenly words that while we understand in general the word love the full depth of that the length the breadth the depth and the height of it we need a revelation by the Spirit of the Living God 
because it's a heavenly word. And we need to approach it with such a heavenly fear because why? It's what God is. Many people want to take that word and so lower it to see it through a human mindset. And you cannot because this thing cannot be comprehended by the mind. It has to be spiritually apprehended. It wants to get into your spirit, the very core of your being. That's why many people, all the love they know is an emotional, soulish love. And that soulish love, because it's earthly, is always temporal. And it moves and changes with circumstances. But His love is eternal. And therefore, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change with the winds. It doesn't change with the waves. It is consistent. And in every circumstance, it will not fail. It will not forsake you. He goes on. And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. We talk about the secret place. And each one of us has a secret place of our being that area of that which is most precious to us, where the real us is hidden. Because we don't want the world to see that, because if you see me, the real me, I might get injured. And this life is so filled with rejection, that secret part is covered. But we are invited to come into the secret place of His presence, where we experience the very treasury of the heart of the Father opened up to us through the blood of Jesus, declaring how precious you are, inviting you to come, not judging, condemning you, but saying, come by belief in the blood, by standing in faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Qualified. And this place of abiding, most of us have understand this abiding in rejection. Our whole life has been under this gray cloud of rejection. We abide in it. It's our normal life. God wants to take you out of that and bring you to this place where you abide in His love, kept in this love. This becomes your home place, His love. Let's go real quickly to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. I am so grateful that his tenderness, his mercy, that as a bruised reed, he didn't break me. When I was at that place where the fire and the wick of my life was about to go out, he didn't extinguish it. But he met me right where I was at and he sought to lift me. He saw me as something what the world didn't. Go real forward to Ezekiel chapter 16. And I want to show you how the world has saw you, but then how he sees you. Verse 5. Well, let's read verse 4. As for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water for cleansing. You were not rubbed with salt or even wrapped in clothes. No eye looked with pity on you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for you were abhorred on the day you were born. When I passed by, I saw you squirming in your blood. I said to you while you were in your blood, live. Yes, I said while you were in your blood, live. 
I saw you at your worst moment when everyone around you, when the world completely rejected you at your most vulnerable moment, your birth. You can't be any weaker. You can't be any more vulnerable. And the world rejected you. And I don't know, but maybe you've gone through a place where you were so vulnerable. You've gone through situations where you were so hurt. And what did the world do? They turn around at that weak point and they rejected you and walked all over you. And maybe some of the church did as well. I am grateful that in that moment, Jesus said, if you will hear my voice, I speak to you. I call you by name. You are mine. Come and I speak life. I look at you and a life for a life. My life I give for your life. When you were dying, rejected, forsaken, I came and I died and I was rejected and forsaken so that you might live life for a life. Because to me, you meant everything. To me, you are all. You're right on my heart. I've written you on the palm of my hand. I cannot forget you nor will I. And he says, I see you in this vulnerable, terrible situation, and I want to lift you, minister to you. Go to Jeremiah chapter 31. Go back a little bit. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The Lord appeared to him, from afar, saying, and I want in the name above all names that you would hear him speak this to you in the name of Jesus. Any voice of rejection or hurt trying to speak loud, I say, be silent in Jesus' name. The Lord appeared from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with loving kindness. Again, I will build you and you will be rebuilt. God said, listen, you may consider yourself down and out, but this day I stand and I call you with an everlasting love that doesn't change. There is no shadow of a turning in me. See, don't look at him in the light of how others are because he's not earthly. He's a heavenly father. And we've so judged him based on our earthly experiences but earthly things are temporal. They're moved by this and that. But He is eternal. He does not change. Neither does His love towards you. And I understand maybe you've gone through some really bad situations and circumstances. But He's the only one who is able to meet because He went through it for you. You cannot go through a worse situation. He walked this earth as the perfect one. He did not do he, anything wrong. He was not do any punishment and yet he endured the worst punishment you could think about. Suffered the wrath of God, was separated for that moment for you so that he can stand before you, show you the hands, the holes in his hands, and say, listen, it's you. And that this day, may the Spirit of God open your eyes to see, to get that revelation that he loves you. He wants to lift you. He wants to rebuild you. Psalm 27. David, one of my favorite men. David, this mighty man who we know became the mightiest king in Israel, yet was so rejected by his family, said in verse 10, my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me up. Utterly rejected by men. When Samuel turned up the house and said, the Lord has one of these sons to anoint as the king, where was David? Out in the fields. And nobody even realized he was gone because they didn't care. He wasn't the family member. He was the rejected son. But he was the anointed one. He was the one that God sought out. God seeks out the broken. And God's seeking you out today in the name of Jesus. Because he sees you not through your guilt, not through, but through the blood of Jesus. And he's calling you to come and throw yourself on that blood that this day he might redeem you and bring you out. David, 
who had every reason to be bitter and mad because the enemy so gets you and he always has you pointing back. How unqualified, how unworthy you were. But look at this. The Lord is my light. What I see, what brightens my eyes is Him. And you need Him to be your light. You need for Him to open up and show you the cross, what He did for you, so that there's a fresh light that shines on you and that this day, everything changes. He's my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. I'm grateful. I can't defend it. And I've seen how I'm not strong enough to defend, but He does. And my life is a testimony of how He defends it. And He will defend you. He will demonstrate you if you will this day hear His voice and allow Him in and allow your right now for Him just to touch you. When evildoers came up upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear the war rage against me. In spite of this, I shall be confident. I mean, this is the man they sought after. They tried to kill. They did everything, but you couldn't defeat him. Why? Listen to this. One thing. I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. What's that beauty? When you see him, you see how precious he is. And in him, you see how precious you are. As you see how wonderful he is, you begin to see how wonderful you are. How he loves you. And the bigger he gets, he lifts you. And so David saw himself through Jesus, through the Lord. He goes on to say, from the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me upon a rock. In this place of that secret place of his heart, he will meet with me. And that very place where the real him is revealed, I will meet with him. And the real me and the real him will come meet. And he will lift you. This is the day of salvation. Now is the time. The Lord is crying out to you today. This is the time for him to just so minister to you. And I just pray and I break off of you every spirit of rejection. Everything of the enemy in the name of Jesus. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Father, I stand in the gap and I raise them up away of the blood. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Come and reveal Jesus. Come and open eyes to see, ears to hear. Father God, this day, let this be the day. Father, let us be now. In the name of Jesus, receiving your salvation, let them come and drink of that well. Let them come and be satisfied of that well. Let them come to that place where there's the overflow. Because, Father, I thank you that you don't just answer prayers. You over-answer. And you want them to know that this day they can be made the righteousness of Christ. That this day they can be so transformed and brought up and lifted. I will finish with this. In Ephesians. It says, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him. He chose you in Him. And He wants to raise you up and seat you with Him in heavenly places. To walk by a new order. Not walking based on the earthly. Controlled and held captive to your mind, your will, your emotions. But to walk by the Spirit in a liberty. With His joy. With His peace. Knowing and believing His love. Today is the day of salvation. Today His voice is crying out. Would you receive it? Would you just simply come and say, I come as I am, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to wash me with your blood right now.
I acknowledge my sin, that I'm a sinner, but I thank you, Jesus. You paid the price for me. I believe and I receive you, Jesus. Come into my life. I surrender wholly, completely. Come, make yourself known to me. I thank you, and I confess that you are Lord. Holy Spirit, pour into this vessel. Fill me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and show me Jesus. Reveal Jesus. Open the word to me. Give me eyes and ears to hear. And I thank you that this day there's a death to the old, a death to the rejection, a death to the hurt, and there's a receiving of the life found in you, Jesus, today. Thank you, Father God, that this is the day. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I just hear this and I'll go to this real quick as we bring this together, that He has redeemed you, He has called you by name, He has declared. So let's lay hold of this. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, all my soul, all my mind, my will, my emotions, all the hurt areas, and all that is within me, bless His holy name, bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not none of His benefits who pardons all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit, who crowns me with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies my years with good things, so that my youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all those oppressed. That's your inheritance today. In the name of Jesus, lay hold of that by the Spirit. And I just pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and strengthened in the name of Jesus. If you have him, would you please like, share, and subscribe? Would you let us know? We would love to hear what the Lord's doing in your life. We just bless you and thank you and declare that you are appreciated, you are loved, and you are prayed for in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.